Good morning, friends. The Lord be with you. It is really nice to be able to welcome you to worship on this Lord's Day. It is not only beautiful outside, but it has been beautiful uh, inside as well this morning. Special welcome to the families that are here, friends for baptism. We're glad that you've joined us on this special occasion. Uh, For those who are in the sanctuary, would you mind signing the blue friendship pads? If we don't have uh, an email or contact, please include that. And for those who are online, would you please be sure to sign the virtual friendship pad? We would love to know you are with us. I have, uh, during the week, I get to visit with folks who aren't able to be here. And so the uh, online worship is a lifeline for them. And I said that I would wave to them today. So I'm going to ask everybody to turn around and right above the clock, that's the camera. Everybody wave, say hello to everybody that's out there. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, In your bulletin, there are not only a lot of announcements, but there is also a prayer list. And let me encourage you to continue to use that as you pray for one another. If you'd continue to pray for Keith Bowser, Lucy Interthal, and Tessa Conley, and all of the others who are listed there. And if you would add uh, this morning Bob Mankey to your prayer list, his brother died this past week. So please keep him in your prayers. He's here uh, this morning. Also, if you would remember that today is Vale's birthday. Hi, Vale. Happy birthday. We're glad you're here. And uh, greet her, if you would, with some birthday greetings. Um, A number of announcements that I'd like to highlight. First of all, this coming weekend, the junior highs will be going on retreat in Laurelville. It's always a wonderful weekend, so keep the kids and the advisors in your prayers. In the bulletin, you will see an insert for Amen to Action. Uh, You can register for that on the website, but the information is in the bulletin. Also, there is an announcement in the bulletin about making gingerbread houses for the Advent Outreach Program at the end of the month. The time has changed, so please read that so you can see if you can participate. Thanksgiving is not very far away, and um, the Lesnitz, Van and I and the kids, have over the past uh, Thanksgivings once in a while had an international student or family come and join us for Thanksgiving through the mission organization called PRISM. That information is also in your bulletin. If you have room at your table or you want to have that experience, it's really wonderful to be able to host those international students uh, in your home that way. There are a few deadline things that are coming up that I want to make sure you're aware of. At each door, There is one of these, uh, there are a stack of these um, pamphlets or or flyers. They are for the PAC that we sponsor. PAC 157 is doing a fundraiser for Evergreens. Today is the last day, so you may want to pick that up if you want Evergreens from them. And also, this week will be the last week for you to um, turn in book plates in honor or memory of for the Bibles and the hymnals that are in front of you. If you want to put a a book plate in there with somebody's name on it, um, you can find those sheets uh, at the doors as well uh, when you head out. Uh, Finally, I wanted to remind us that today is, we are going to celebrate Reformation Day. Reformation Day is really tomorrow. It's October 31st and it is Uh, a day in 1517 when Martin Luther, then a monk, a priest, nailed 95 theses to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany uh, because of some of the things that he thought were wrong and wanted to help reform the church. Well, that was sort of the uh, spark that ignited something called the Reformation. We are part of that Reformation as Presbyterians. So we'll uh, see some of that throughout the order of service today. You'll notice that the very first hymn we sing is a hymn that Martin Luther wrote. You also notice that the affirmation of faith today is from the Heidelberg Catechism, which is a reformed document as well. And even 
the confession comes for the call to confession, the assurance from the book of Ephesians that talks about that it is by grace alone that we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with our works, uh, that we have no part in it, but Christ is the righteous one. That was one of the cries of the Reformation as well. So we've filled our liturgy with those themes to remember that and celebrate that. Next Sunday, November 6th, we'll observe the Lord's Supper, and we will also celebrate All Saints Day. We'll have screens up here with pictures of our members who have died this past year. We'll pray a prayer of thanksgiving, and as we come to the table, remember the promise that in the kingdom of God there is that great banquet when all the saints will be together again. And so it'll be a special, it always is a very special Sunday. Finally, I wanted to point out to you that there are some typos in the bulletin, and it's all on me, because I was trying to be helpful, and this is not my skill set. So, in the call to confession that Natalie's going to read, in the middle of that, uh, it says, the spirit who is not at work, it should be now at work. And then in the affirmation of faith, uh, in the first answer, about halfway down, uh, when it says being include toward, it should be being inclined toward all evil. And then in the last uh, sentence of the second answer, it should be than through faith, not that through faith. I just wanted to call your attention to my need for mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> all right. Let's take a moment. Let's stand and greet those around you. Share the peace of Christ with one another. Please join me in the call to worship. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that marked out before us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God.
Let's pray together, friends. God of grace, thank you for the gift of salvation that we know in Jesus Christ. For his righteousness that becomes ours through faith. We are grateful for the gift of the church, the body of Christ, across denominations and through the ages. That we are one in spirit, one in the Lord. As we bring our offerings of thanksgiving and praise to you, because you are worthy of our praise, you are faithful to be present with us each and every day. Your mercy and love know no boundaries, and you have given us the greatest gift of all in your Son, our Savior. And as we bring these offerings, God, may you be honored today. May you be glorified not only in our singing and through our praying, but in the attitudes of our hearts and our minds. And as we lift them to you, may you come to us again right where we are, each one of us in a different place, and meet us there. Remind us of your truth in Christ, of your grace that we know in Jesus. Humble our hearts and renew our faith that we might know your love each and every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So it is our joy this morning to celebrate the sacrament of baptism in just a moment. For the kids, let me remind you, after the baptism, uh, when I walk Delaney around, you can meet Mrs. Hervey and Mrs. Jans up here at the door to go to Young Child and Worship while everyone else uh, sings the hymn. So I just wanted to remind us about the sacrament of baptism and what it is and what it is not. It is not a social rite. It is not just a a cultural more or practice. It is a sacrament. And that means it is uh, an instrument of God's grace. It is a practice of remembering Jesus in our lives and that God has provided Christ to be Savior. Uh, And we are connected to Christ through God's grace by faith. So we bring Delaney this morning as this young child, not based on who she is or what she's done, because she hasn't done anything to deserve God's love, right? She hasn't loved him. She doesn't even know how to do that. But we are reminded that God first loves us. And then we are to respond in love. What it isn't is isn't a means of salvation. This doesn't save Delaney. Uh, Any practice, discipline doesn't save anybody. It's Jesus who saves us. And so we pray for her today that she will grow up and learn who Christ is and then come to that place of faith to make a profession and to uh, confirm the baptism that we practice today. So that's what baptism is, as in I, would, I want to remind us all that there is one baptism. And while we celebrate on Delaney's behalf today, it's the same baptism that her parents were baptized in, that you and I were baptized in. We are one in Christ uh, through this baptism. So I'm going to invite Alicia and Brian to come up and your friends and bring Delaney with you. And Katie, come on down. So since Delaney is uh, so small and tiny and isn't able to answer for herself, uh, Brian and Alicia will answer the questions on her behalf. And so I ask them, do you reaffirm your own faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, do you? And do you claim God's covenant promises on your child's behalf? And do you look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for her salvation? as you do for your own, do you? Do you now unreservedly promise in humble reliance upon God's grace to set before Delaney an example of the new life in Christ, do you? And do you promise to pray with and for her? We do. 
and to bring her up in the knowledge and the love of God to you. Amen. Thank you. Okay, Katie. Good morning. We are one in the Spirit, and we are one in the Lord. We are a church family, and we have the joy and the privilege to offer our encouragement to Delaney and her parents along their faith journey. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, do you, the members of this congregation, in the name of the whole Church of Christ, undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of Delaney, so that in due time she may confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We do. Amen. Will you endeavor by your example and fellowship to strengthen her family ties with the household of God? We will. Um, so on behalf of our congregation, we want to say congratulations. We have a little uh, children's Bible and this beautiful homemade cross as a gift for you. And we do want to recognize um, Tori Potok as the baptism sponsor for Delaney. Um, so that's just an opportunity for them to catch up with a church member to fulfill these promises throughout the next several years. Um, and then we have this beautiful baptism banner that has the names of children that have been recently baptized in our church. It is a real blessing that we had to replace the hooks on the wall because there's so many sheep on it that it started to fall down. So that's a wonderful thing. And Delaney has her own lamb that's going to get put up there today. So congratulations. It's a joyful day uh, in so many ways. It's a serious day because the covenant with God is, um, is a matter of weightiness and gravity. And that's what we're entering into and Delaney's entering into as well. And she's not only here with her parents, but other family and friends. And we're glad uh, that you're a part of this also. Let's pray together if we could. God, thank you for the waters of baptism Waters that are signs of your grace and symbolize the cleansing of our sin through Jesus Christ. We remember his life, death, and resurrection today as we baptize Delaney. And we pray, God, that one day she will come to that place to acknowledge him as Savior and Lord. Be with Brian and Alicia that they indeed would be examples of the new life in Christ for their daughter. Help them to make a commitment and sometimes hard decisions to stay the course as the culture bids them to go off course. And be with us as the church, that we will not only support them, but we will reach out and include them, that we will provide for education for Delaney, through Sunday school and youth groups and mission trips, that we will give her every opportunity uh, to know who Jesus is by being the body of Christ to her. So bless these waters, set them apart for your holy and sacred purpose today. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Here you go, sweetie. Come here. How are you? Oh, sorry. And what's the Christian name of your child? Delaney Joy. Delaney Joy, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We didn't quite get the Holy Spirit in there, but that's okay. See what love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. I'm going to have the joy of walking Delaney around to introduce her to you. And uh, you can sing the hymn and remain seated. And the children can meet Mrs. Hervey and Mrs. Jans up at the front door. Okay? <laughs>
As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were, uh, we were by nature objects of wrath. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. O oh God, we hear in your word that our lives are changed and no longer gratify the cravings of our sinful nature. We confess that we still struggle with that old nature towards sin. Like Paul, we wrestle with doing things we don't want to, or at least we should not do. We also don't do the very things we know we should do. Forgive us that we have not totally surrendered our old life. Give us humility to accept where we are and die to ourselves daily so that the new life in Christ will be more and more evident. Thank you that your grace in Jesus is sufficient for our failures and our sins. We offer this in the name of him who sacrificed his life for us. Jesus, who is the atonement for our sin. Amen. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ, in order that in the coming ages he might show us the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Friends, believe and receive the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. be seated. We had a wonderful conversation this morning in inquirer's class about tithes and offerings. What are they? What does it mean? How much do you give? Where does it go? All of those things. And uh, sometimes we take for granted to understand that this is simply a reminder that everything that we have, all that we are, belongs to God and is a gift from him. And while certainly we have worked hard at earning things, it is still the grace of God that has given us the ability to work hard. God is the great provider. Our giving of tithes and offerings is simply our act of worship, of saying thank you. And out of gratitude, we return what is already his to be used through the church to celebrate Christ's love and grace for us. And so as we give our tithes and offerings, may they represent not just our financial resource, but the giving of our lives each and every day to the glory of God. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for how much you have provided for us. It has all come from your benevolent hand. Each breath we take is a breath that you breathe for us and into us. Each day we awaken, you have given us a day to rejoice and be glad in. Even to be here in the midst of the church, the body of Christ, what a joy to know the fellowship that we have in Jesus' name. So may these resources that we return to you and are yours be used for your glory. May we offer them With joy and out of gratitude, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
you would remain standing, we're going to affirm our faith in a different way this morning other than the Apostles' Creed using the Heidelberg Catechism. And uh, there are questions in the Heidelberg Catechism for each Sunday. Uh, We're going to do question number 60 and 61 uh, this morning. I'll ask the question and you will join together and we'll read the answer. How are you righteous before God? Only by faith in Jesus Christ. Even though my conscience accuses me of having grievously sinned against all God's commandments, of never having kept any of them, and of still being inclined toward all evil, nevertheless, without any merit of my own, out of sheer grace, God grants and credits to me the perfect satisfaction, righteousness, and holiness of Christ, as if I had never sinned nor been a sinner, and as if I had been perfectly obedient as Christ was obedient for me. All I need to do is accept this gift with a believing heart. Question 61, why do you say that through faith alone you are righteous together? Not because I please God by the worthiness of my faith. It is because only Christ's satisfaction, righteousness, and holiness makes me righteous before God. And because I can accept this righteousness and make it mine in no other way than through faith. Thank you. You may be seated. So in your bulletin, there is a uh, prayer list, and I would invite you to find that uh, and pull it out this morning. It's on a white sheet, and it can be unfolded, and there are several names, people you know and people you don't know, but that God knows in their circumstances. Let's bow our heads together and come before God in prayer. Father of mercies, Thank you for the greatest gift of all that we know in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. For your grace that is sufficient for our every need. For your grace that calls us to faith in Christ. For your grace that supplies strength and joy in the times that are dark and difficult. For your grace that includes even infants in your covenant family. Thank you, God, that we know that grace fully in Jesus. And there is nothing that we bring to our salvation other than a willingness to know you and be loved by you. Thank you, God, for the Dorner family for Alicia and Brian and their desire to raise Delaney in the faith. Surround them with love and support that they might teach her the truth and help her to know that Christ alone is her means of salvation in knowing you. Thank you for the body of Christ, the church, the family of God, whom you have called and set apart to be distinctly different than the world around us, to be a light in the darkness, to proclaim the hope for all nations that Jesus is Lord. In these days ahead when people celebrate darkness or fear and desire to be frightened or frighten others, Help us instead to live by faith and not out of fear. Keep our children safe as they walk the neighborhoods in this next day or two. Equip them, O God, with your truth to know they are loved and one of the beloved. I pray for our schools and ask that you would be with teachers and administrators, bus drivers and aides. And all of those who are in that environment where students desire to learn. May there be safety 
and security. May there be a desire to come together instead of divide uh, among our culture. And be with our children, the students in the classroom. Give them minds to learn and hearts that want to grow in the truth. And help us not to follow the desires of our own hearts, O God, but submit to the revelation you have given to us in Scripture of who we are and whose we are. We know that there are many among us who are hurting, some of whom are on this prayer list before us. We take just a brief moment of silence, God, and we pray for these friends we know or don't know and others who are not listed but yet need to know your presence and peace. Hear our prayers. Oh God, in a world that seeks to divide people, in a time when the war of words is negative toward other people, bind us together. Keep us positive that we might be instruments of faith, hope, joy, and love. And hear us now as we join our voices together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, and if you wanted to find it in the Pew Bible in front of you, it's page 1082, Acts chapter 3. Um, I didn't hear a big gasp that we moved on from Acts chapter 2. For those who are visiting, we've been preaching through the book of Acts for some time now, and we've been stuck in chapter 2 for at least five or six weeks. So uh, it's time to move on, and we are uh, to the third chapter. Before we read from the Word of God, let me pray for us. God, you have made your will known to us and revealed to us what is true, right, and good, where peace comes from, what will still our soul. His name is Jesus. Open our minds and our hearts that we might not just gain knowledge, but grow in wisdom today. We would hear your word, find comfort and conviction in it, continuing to be changed and transformed to be your people, the light of the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the word of God from Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, the lame man asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And the man fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately the man's feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So all week I have been singing this song in my head. Peter and John went to pray. But before I sing the rest of it, I have to ask, because the first seven, eight, nine people I saw in church this morning and asked, do you know this song? They said, no. How many people know when Peter and John went to pray? Diana, are you the only? James does. Oh, my gosh, where's our Christian education going? Anyway, so here's the song. It's a Sunday school song, for heaven's sakes. Peter and John went to pray. They met a layman on the way. He asked for alms and held out his palms, and this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Man, we need to do better. <laughs> so, that's the text for today. 
This is an important text, and we have, in chapter 2, read over several times that there were signs and wonders being done. This is a sign and a wonder. A lame man who was carried every day to the temple gate because he was lame from birth and asked for alms. That's who this is about, right? Somebody had to carry him there every day, and why did they carry him? Well, because it was the only way for him to make a living or provide for food or any of the necessities. Asking for alms was one of those good things, allowable things, encouraged practices by those who were not able to provide for themselves. Please do not see this as begging. In fact, alms giving, giving alms to the poor or the needy, was looked highly upon by others. It wasn't a sad situation. It was a necessary and required interaction between those who had none and those who had some they could offer. So this lame man went and asked for alms every day at the temple gate. Peter and John are going to the temple to pray. And it's important to realize that because even after their conversion to Christianity, if we can call it that, even after God revealed to them through the Spirit who Jesus is, they didn't stop practicing their faith. In fact, they continued to go to the temple to pray, but now they were praying probably differently because now they know that the God whom they were praying to is the God of Jesus, and Jesus is a part of that God. And so Peter and John go to the temple to pray, and the man is there, and he asks for alms, and it says they look at him. And then Peter says, look at us. And the expectation of the lame man was, they're going to give me alms. They're going to provide money for me that I need. And so his gaze was focused on them. Hear the words of Peter. I have no silver and gold. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I want us to appreciate the gravity of what's going on here. Last week we talked about the fact that people had to, or wanted to, sell their possessions in order to give money to those who didn't have money. Peter and John had no money to give. But that doesn't mean they didn't have something to give. What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What a gift. What a gift. This man had no idea what that day was going to hold for him. I'm not sure Peter and John had any idea what that day was going to hold for them. And friends, we are right as the church to help people financially and materially, to take care of physical needs and real needs. It is the right thing to do. But let me suggest to you that we as the church have something more to give people than just physical and material needs being met. There is no one else who can provide what God has called us together to provide for the world. There are plenty good charities who do good work of financial assistance. But the church, we as believers, Peter and John as disciples, 
have so much more to give than just a financial gift. We have the name of Jesus to offer them. Do you see? That meets their very real, spiritual, eternal need. So much more than a temporary financial gift could. We continue to give those. They're important. They're necessary. That's obedient and right. But too often we have, as the church, have fallen short of giving what only we have to give. And that is the hope that we know in Jesus. Think about that and let it sink in. We have sort of had a little cowardice in the church of being unwilling to share that most precious of gifts with people because we don't want to offend them and we don't want to be offensive. But the name of Jesus might offend people. But it's the only way to salvation. So we want to do it in a winsome and kind and humble way. But friends, we have been tasked and given the role as God's people, the holy nation, the royal priesthood, to share Christ with others. That is a challenge for us in our day. But if we don't do it, no one else will. I shared yes, uh, last Sunday the story of two men from this congregation 50 or 60 years ago who out of their own pockets took some money and went to meet the need uh, of a needy family, took it to the front door. and It was received well and humbly. I had the privilege of being in touch with the adult children of one of those men recently, in the last few weeks, exchanged messages back and forth, and one of those adult children wrote this to me. He said, the children on this text, I think they're all retired now, were given a gift no money can buy. Daily examples of New Testament gospel servant living from both parents. You know, Dirk how grateful we are. A gift that no money can buy. I don't know about you if you're a parent or a grandparent, but that is the gift that I desire for my children and anybody that comes after me. Surely I want to help supply their material financial needs. Surely I want them to be well educated and succeed in life. But far beyond and much greater than that is that they know and understand this gift of Jesus. Because that's what lasts forever. And not just for my biological children and family, but for this extended Christian family that every one of these we baptize. We're not just going through some ritual that's cute, because she's beautiful, but that we really actually mean and follow through that what we want for Delaney and all of those other lambs on that banner and everyone that's not even on that banner, our neighbors and people we love, is that they know Jesus Do you have that to give to someone is the bottom line. Because you have to have it in order to give it. You have to have it in order to give it. But if you have it, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Give what is most important. But the real trigger to me in this is this verse. The man was always taken to the gate of the temple. From birth he was lame. He was taken to the gate. Listen to this. After the healing, 
It says, and leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them. You get that? Entered the temple with them. He had not been in the temple ever in his life. He had not been able to practice being in the presence of God. He was always at the gate. But they gave him what they had, Jesus. And in that healing, he had the privilege and the joy, not just of walking and leaping, but praising God. And so I think of how many people aren't here and for one reason or another have been left at the door or feel they can't enter. And you and I have a great privilege, a great privilege of sharing what God has given to us in the grace of Christ with those others so that they can have that joy of knowing the Father's love for them and of entering into the house of God into the people of God, leaping, walking, and praising God. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you what. It would be a horrible sentence for me not to be able to enter the door and praise God with you all every Sunday. And whether people know it or not, they're missing out. And they don't have that intimacy that relationship, that joy of knowing the deep, deep love of the Father. You and I, like Peter and John, has something to give. It's not just financial. It's not just material. It's not creating a successful path for your child, going to the best school and getting a high-paying job. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. Do they know Jesus? Have you shared Jesus with them? In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, they can rise up and walk and leap and praise God. Know the deep, deep love of the Father. Let's pray together. God of grace, thank you for this word that is comforting and convicting. May we as your people, a royal priesthood, share with others, our family, our friends, our colleagues, the news of salvation that is in Jesus, the power of that is in the name of Jesus, to heal, restore, forgive, reconcile, and give new life to. That is our privilege. Let us give to others what we have because you've given it to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final hymn together.
So, beloved, remember that wherever you're going, God is calling or sending you there. For Peter and John, they were going about their daily routine of going to the temple. Maybe it's on your way to school or work tomorrow that God will give you an opportunity to give to someone what you have to give. Not just a financial gift, but the hope of Jesus. The reality that there is a Father in heaven who loves that person. The opportunity to enter into the presence of God with you to share in the joy of praising the Creator. Wherever you're going, God's sending you there. He wants to do something in you, through you, in that very place. And remember, nothing separates us from the love of God that we know in Christ Jesus. And it is God's gift of grace in His Son, our Savior, the obedient life, the sacrificial death, the hopeful resurrection, the promised return of Christ. That is our hope. He is our salvation. May the Holy Spirit so fill you that God will do through you signs and wonders in bringing other people to the knowledge of Jesus. Today, tomorrow, always. Amen. You can be seated to listen to the bells. Thank you.